Okay, so nice to see you, Will. Nice to see you, Luke. And um, here we are in sunny Wimborne in the in the heart of Dorset. Um, good opportunity to chat with Will and to chat with Luke as well, which is uh, interesting, chatting with a drummer as well as a guitarist. Hmm. I've got some good questions to ask you guys, actually, about that. But... It's totally right. You've got this kind of uh, you know flamenco style going on, then you've got your classical kind of stuff going on and almost some African kind of sounds at, at times. You know, tell us about, about these influences. Are, are they influences that have come just from growing up and having this music around you or do you actively seek out new sounds and you know new influences like that yeah i think it's a bit of both um i'm kind of inspired by a huge amount really i guess um musically and otherwise i think for me a big turning point for for me as a player i guess was when i first saw an italian guitarist called antonio forcioni um i must have been 13, 14 when I first saw him and he was the first player who I saw who took the acoustic guitar and did just everything with it. I mean he used it in all these different styles, all these different genres, um, the techniques he was employing, the musicality he was getting out of it, the expression, it was kind of quite mind-blowing for me and from that moment it kind of opened me up to um, a, another world of players and you know, as I went on I was, I was kind of quite taken by how um, some players kind of performed as well, how they presented their music, from, especially when they can presented so many different styles. And I've always been quite taken by players who um, kind of keep the audience guessing and keep them wondering, well, what's going to come next? Or what's uh, the next kind of thing you're going to do? And uh, Antonio was one, one of those who I've seen many times and he always ups, ups his game. Um, oh. Clive Carroll being another one who um, seems to be able to just kind of take the audience on a bit of a journey and mm. um is that something that you, you try and do then in your sets you know when you're when you're planning a set list you take time to consider that that journey that the audience is going to go yeah through. i mean i think i've landed myself there um we're having a little chat sets. just before we hit record about uh, some disco influence so i don't yeah. know if <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you want to talk to luke about yeah. disco <laughs> yeah. hasn't quite made it in there unfortunately yeah. <laughs> yeah. for the next album yeah next maybe. one yeah. The, the the grand second album yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it so what about there's an idea that that luke puts forward that you're not too hot on how do you, <laughs> many how do, times how many do you times. that i mean because again you know you're you're a chilled out guy you're quite patient and all that kind of stuff. Do you get to the point where you drive home at night thinking, oh, I should have said something? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. How, how uh, do you work through that together? Um, I, I think I just kind of try and keep quiet and try and steer them off in <laughs> yeah. a different direction. Yeah. <laughs> just no. force it. No, yeah. I, I mean, I, don't, I can't really think of anything where, you know, there's been a complete kind of disagreement musically, no. really. I mean, we, 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 one of the good things about when we've been working together, and I think it's quite important, especially if you're doing composition together and if you're collaborating in this way, you're not just turning up and doing a gig and then leaving. Mm. Um, you know, we kind of uh, musically kind of share quite a lot of the same ideas and you get mm. to know the, know each other so well that you know what, what will work. Um, you know, there's lots of LEDs and some glowing stuff on, on your board. Yeah, I like, I like a few flashing lights, um, but it's, it's relatively straightforward, really, what I have. Okay. Um, I mean, effectively, I have my two guitars that I perform with. I've got the, they're both custom filed. One of them um, is the steel string and the, and the nylon string, and I plug them both into this tone bone um, preamp yeah. so I can quickly switch between them on stage because there are some pieces where I do, for example, start a loop going on one guitar and then put the guitar down and flip to the other guitar, for example, and add, yeah. add so you can get the mixture between steel string and nylon string nice. and the textures. Um, so is there any chance that we can get a little demo of how you might blend the two guitars? Just uh, for, or is that yes. not kind of yeah, set we up could, we, could, we could certainly do that. We could certainly do that. Um, just for, for a minute or two? Yeah, absolutely. So Putting you on the spot, mate? Eh? No, no, absolutely. This is what it's all about. Um, so, for example, so this is the tone bone preamp. I've got the um, head rush... Um, loop station um, and what I could what I would be, there's, a, there's a piece on the album called um, Harari which is an African inspired piece uh, and I, we kind of do this thing where we, we build up quite a you know a bit, almost like a bit of a soundscape and then it kind of goes into um, some some rhythms and I'll, I'll build up like a something something along the lines of Thank you. 
So that's quite a simple little loop. Going around there, and then I can that down there. Pick this one up. textures between like nylon string and steel string which is something I quite like doing live because they've got very different characters um, and you can just go on and on kind of as much as you want with that really. So that's kind of a little idea of how I do that live. And lastly you know your guitars um, you know I'll hold my hands up now and say that my, my knowledge of acoustic guitars is, is, is limited compared to the, like the electric guitar side mm -hmm. of things. Um, just quickly about these two guitars, you know, why why this brand, why these models, you know, what was involved with the decision process? Yeah, so that? I mean, these these are files uh, made by um, a chap in the Lake District called Roger Bucknell, and I've been aware of files for, for years and years. Some fantastic players use them. Um, again, like people like a friend of mine called Tristan Sume, who's a great acoustic player, who uses files. I always love the sound that he gets. Um, and other players like Gordon Giltrap um, have signature models as well. Uh, the list of players is, is fairly insane, really, um, the people who've played Files o over the years. And I was lucky enough to be approached by Files as, like, as, to become an indoor C. Um, yeah. So they said that if um, I got this wonderful email from Roger just saying, if you ever want a guitar, we can talk and I'll, I'll make you a guitar. And I was no like, way. Well, then we'll do that then, shall we? <laughs> <Yeah>. That's <laughs> uh, awesome. <clears throat> um, okay, so just to, to finish off the the, the conversation and the, and the interview, um, what does the the year hold for you guys as, as a as an act? You know, what 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 have you got planned? You know, musically and live music and all that kind of stuff. Is it you got a pretty busy schedule or or what or not? Uh, yeah, album is released February twelfth. Okay. Hitchhiker album, um, and then we go on tour February thirteenth. So Straight Friday. away. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, uh, yeah. and we do our little sort of it's almost like a coastal tour. I think it's been described that. Yeah, it? yeah. Hasn't it? Um, Keep near the sea. And nice. then there's the old festivals for the for the summer and all that. There's a we out again in April. I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be quite busy because um, we've been working over working while getting the album finished. Yeah. So now that that's done we, we were um, just wanting to take it out on the road and so yeah we've got this little tour and then in, we'll be back out in, in April and then the summer festivals season Great. coming around so it's going to be it's going to be a busy one it's going to mm. be good and yeah. um, Luke will be accompanying me on, on some gigs that I'm really excited about like for example up in the Alapool Guitar Festival where I've played a couple of times solo yeah and then him coming along um, Great. To, to ruin that <laughs> yeah, yeah. ruin yeah. a perfectly good guitar <laughs> festival yeah. with drums um, so yeah it's um it's going to be a good year, I think. Yeah, uh, it's really exciting. Uh, I, you know, wish you guys all, all the best, and thanks for just really interesting sort of insight, you know, into your your musical background. And you know, I have to be honest and say I didn't expect to to hear, you know, what I've heard this morning about, you know, you, both of you, your different backgrounds, you know, the country music, the classical, you know, all of that kind of stuff to bringing it all together to where you guys are at now and what you're just about to embark in the next few weeks and months you know fair play to you guys and and good luck and all the best and i would like to say though that, that literally all the genius that is in involved is is will will, <laughs> will is don't say that it never went right, out the door, in my it? opinion and i think in a lot of others as well will was one of the best in the world yeah and um and you can you can tell you really yeah. can tell and and i think the whole the album and everything that goes into it um you know it's will deserves most of the credit. Yeah. <laughs> really yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pass credit. you that tenor later on. Cheers. Yeah, right, nice. <laughs> okay, well, cheers, guys. Thanks, Sam. Thank cheers. Thank you very much.